Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Fujifilm Instax PAL, a tiny digital camera with no viewfinder, no screen, and unlike any Instax camera to date, no built-in printer either. So it can't really be described as an instant camera. But what it does have, apart from those cute looks, is an ultra-wide angle lens that'll capture pretty much everyone or everything you point it at. It then sends those photos directly to an Instax printer, or automatically to your phone where a new app can apply effects before sharing or printing them out. Available in four pastel colours or shiny black, it's undeniably cute and surprisingly good fun in practice. But the big question is whether it's £90 worth of fun for the camera alone in the UK, or £105 if you go for the gem black version, or $200 when bundled with a mini printer in the US. Plus, there's the thorny issue of why you wouldn't just use the almost certainly better camera that's in your phone instead, perhaps with one of Fujifilm's link printers. To find out, I spent some quality time with my new pal to see if it could be your pal too. Okay, let's deal with the baby elephant in the room. Unlike any of the Instax cameras before it, once again, the PAL will not make prints by itself. And again, there's no viewfinder or screen for composition. It's unapologetically basic, but the simplicity of PAL is in fact its secret weapon. You see, Fujifilm reckons that rather than wasting time checking and sharing pictures straight away on a phone, PAL encourages you to stay in the moment, not to get distracted or delayed, and just keep shooting. Plus, if your phone doesn't already have a 0.5x camera, PAL will also give you similar ultra-wide angle coverage for larger groups or selfies. Then, like film, there's the anticipation and fun of seeing your photos later, perhaps at the end of a day out. Although if you like, you can still view them straight away if you prefer. And if you need more precise composition, you can also use your phone to remote control the PAL up to a few feet away. Looking a little bit like the love child of Mike Wachowski and BB-8, the Instax PAL is undeniably cute and seriously small. It's barely larger than a ping pong ball and the rounded shape sits comfortably in the palm of your hand, kind of like a sawn off beauty blender. Fujifilm supplies it with a rubber ring accessory that can either push onto the top to provide very basic composition, a bit like peering through a monocle, or more usefully be used as a stand, allowing more precise adjustments when you're remote controlling it. When pushed onto the top of the camera, it's tempting to use this accessory as a handle or key ring, but it's only held in place by friction, so do make sure that you also have the string attached to the PAL camera itself. You don't want it falling on the floor. If you do want to hang it more securely, Fujifilm sells an optional silicon case in five colours, which includes a proper carabiner for mounting. Do note the PAL is not weather sealed, nor particularly tough, so don't throw it around like a GoPro. This isn't an action camera. Looking at PAL's design and the Instax history, you'd be forgiven for assuming the little strip along the top is where tiny stamp-sized prints might emerge, and how cool would that be? But remember, PAL can't make prints by itself. This strip is actually the power button, with a multicoloured LED behind it to indicate the operating status, and you can customise the startup colours via the phone app. To the left of the Instax logo are three tiny holes for the speaker, which can play customised pre-shutter recordings like as well as emitting a melancholy sigh when it powers down. Is this a camera or a Tamagotchi? The line's blurred, but I'm here for it. Meanwhile, to the right of the logo is a white LED that doubles as a flash or a charging indicator. The flash can be set in the app to be auto, always on, or always off. I genuinely left it on though, as strongly backlit subjects weren't always correctly exposed without it. Dominating the front surface though is the lens with ultra-wide coverage equivalent to around 16 and a quarter mil and a reasonably fast aperture of f2.2. The focus is fixed and covers a distance of around 20 centimeters to infinity. Now the coverage isn't quite as wide as 0.5 times lenses on modern smartphones, but it is way wider than any of the Instax cameras to date. So it's much more appropriate for larger group shots or those where you want to include more of the surroundings. Plus it allows more success when you're shooting blindly without a screen. Instax PAL has access to shutter speeds from one quarter to eight thousandth of a second, as well as sensitivities from 100 to 1600 ISO. But beyond a plus or minus two EV compensation and the flash setting via the app, exposures are fully automatic. It literally is just point and shoot. Round the back is a generously sized shutter button and it's easy to operate the PAL one-handed. Below this is a USB-C port for charging the internal battery and bonus points to Fujifilm for allowing you to open the unit from below and replace an old or broken battery in the future. We need to see more of that. 
In fact, while we're looking underneath, extra bonus points for also including a tripod thread. I didn't expect it on a camera like this. Also note the switch labeled L and F. L stands for link mode and tells PAL to automatically send the last photo to a connected Bluetooth Instax printer. It's compatible with any of the link models, whether they output mini, square or wide prints. Although to avoid too much cropping, do ensure that you previously set the PAL to your printer's shape via the app first. Here I've got it connected to a mini link printer, a painless process which took care of itself as soon as I turned them both on. A few seconds later, the combo were ready to go, and moments after pushing the PAL's shutter button, the print emerged from the mini link. It's neat, but I think that most people will probably use the PAL via their phones. So set the switch to F and you're in fun mode, where the PAL automatically sends photos directly to the new app on your phone via Bluetooth, or queues them up for transfer later in bulk if the app or phone aren't available straight away. Now, since these photos are designed to be viewed on a phone screen or printed on Instax paper, there's actually no need to even use the full 5 megapixel resolution of the sensor. So the PAL app resizes and crops them depending on the Instax film type that you previously selected in the app, mini, square or wide. The resized versions may now only measure around 1 megapixel each, but still have sufficient resolution to make a good looking Instax print. And the smaller file sizes mean that I was never waiting more than about 3 seconds for each image to transfer over Bluetooth to my Galaxy S20 Android phone. That said, friends of mine testing it with iPhones reported slightly longer transfer times per image up to around 10 seconds each. There's enough internal memory to store around 50 photos, but no way to access, view or delete them until you're connected to the app. The 50 shot limit is to minimize the potential transfer time to your phone. By default, the app automatically deletes images from the PAL's internal memory as soon as they're copied onto your phone, thereby freeing it up to take some more. But if you want a backup of those images at the full 5 megapixel resolution without cropping or effects applied, just pop a micro SD card in the slot in the side. But beware, if you have automatic image deletion enabled in the app settings as it is by default, it'll unhelpfully delete images from the SD card as soon as they're transferred to the phone. Yeah, thanks for that Fujifilm. If you disable automatic image deletion though, any subsequent photos you take afterwards are kept on the SD card, albeit still up to a maximum of 50. So you'll still need to enable auto image deletion at some point to clear that memory and, and the queue. But in my test, this does seem to leave any previously recorded JPEGs on the SD card. Now, to me, this doesn't make any sense. If I've inserted an SD card, I want the PAL to record untouched images to it and leave them untouched, even as the internal memory is refreshed on each phone connection. Hopefully this capability might be added as an app update in the future. But for now, if you want to record images onto SD cards for later use, you'll need to disable auto image deletion before shooting and accept a 50 shot limit. Of course, this is overthinking what is supposed to be a very simple product, but I can't help it. And hopefully you also enjoy this behind the scenes detail that I go into in these reviews. But let's get back to the PAL and the way it was designed to be used. Here I have the PAL app running on my Samsung Galaxy S20 and I've previously paired my phone with the camera. You can see the battery status and shooting format in the top left, along with my customized name for the PAL. Take a photo with the PAL and you'll see it automatically transferring to the app after which it can be viewed in the gallery. Again, it took about three seconds to my phone. Note the default tall shape of the image matching the Instax mini format. You can change the format to match the Instax square or Instax wide formats at the point of capture using the app. And I found myself mostly capturing images in the wide shape as it maximizes the coverage of the lens. To illustrate the coverage in action, I photographed Brighton Pier with the PAL in each of the three formats before then downloading the images via the app. Here's the view when set to Instax Mini, followed by Instax Square, and finally Instax Wide. Note how the app has added borders to match the output of an actual Instax print. With them all placed side by side, it's clear how much more the wide version is capturing and how the square and the mini versions are simply cropping the field of view widthwise, leaving you with less coverage. So if you want to exploit that wide angle lens, you should be shooting in the wide format. I also took the same view with an SD card inserted, which recorded an uncropped image with the full 5 megapixel resolution of the sensor. Place this image side by side with the one that I downloaded via the app, and you'll see the processed version on the right is applying a 
tiny crop to the width to match the paper shape, but to all intents and purposes, they are representing the same view. And while the original does have a little bit more detail, the processed one is good enough for sharing or printing. Meanwhile, if the PAL is set to mini or square formats via the app, the SD card still records a full width image, but the app generates and saves a cropped version at the desired shape. It's also possible to change the format of an existing photo within the app through the gallery, but do beware that if you originally shot it in the narrow mini format, then you'll be making square or wide crops from that, not the original wide image. The result, unsurprisingly, becomes rather tied, as you're starting by cropping that wide image to match the narrow mini shape, before then cropping it again to match the square or wide shape that you want to output in. This is why I ended up leaving the PAL in Instax wide mode, as it gave the maximum flexibility in cropping and recomposing later within the app. I think it's the best choice, even if you only ever print or share mini shaped images. Moving on, the app also lets you edit images, adding text or stickers, zooming in or rotating, changing the format, as I've already mentioned, applying one of 18 effects, or simply adjusting the brightness, contrast, or saturation with a series of sliders. You can then add a background color to highlight the frame for sharing online, download the image, save it, or send it to a printer. The app will talk to any of the Instax link printers that use Bluetooth, as well as to the mini Evo or mini Lee Play cameras, which feature built-in printers of their own. It won't talk to the old SP3 printer though, which was Wi-Fi only. It's also possible to assemble a series of images into an animation, which you can either share digitally or print it out with a QR code that then links to a digital version. This works well with the PAL when you push and hold down the shutter button to capture a short burst of action. Before wrapping up, one of the highlights of the PAL is using the app to remote control it. This uses Bluetooth to deliver a live preview on your phone. And while the speed of Bluetooth means the update is a bit laggy, even when the phone and camera are very close, it is good enough for composing a more precise shot or framing a larger group. I used it to ensure my test view of Brighton Pier was straight, as well as this view of Brighton Pavilion reflected in a pond. Now, neither of these images would have looked particularly great with a squint horizon when shot blindly. It'll also allow you to remote shoot at a modest distance, limited by the speed and range of Bluetooth again, of course, but here it was fine for composing a self-portrait from across the desk. You can also set a self-timer so you have time to glance up from your phone screen after composing. I can see this remote control being fun for portraits of, say, pets, where you can pop the pal in front of them before retreating to a nearby sofa to remotely trigger the shutter. Okay, now it's time for my final verdict, during which I'll show you some digital shots that I took with the PAL. All of these were processed and downloaded via the app. At first glance, the Instax PAL is a curiosity. Sure, it may be Tamagotchi cute, but unlike any Instax camera to date, it won't print by itself, there's no means to compose on the camera alone, and in terms of quality, it'll almost certainly be beaten by your phone, which, lest we forget, you'll probably be carrying all the time. But the Instax PAL is all about simplicity and staying in the moment, not getting distracted or delayed by your phone and instead merrily pointing its ultra-wide lens at anything that takes your fancy. If you're rolling your eyes at this point, don't worry, I too was skeptical at first, but having spent some time with a PAL, I actually enjoy the way it frees you from a traditional way of shooting. Blindly taking photos can be surprisingly liberating and there's certainly some fun in anticipating how certain charts will work out when you view them later. It pays not to overthink the PAL, although if I could give just one piece of techie advice, it would be to set it to the Instax wide format to maximize not only the coverage and detail, but also the flexibility in making crops later on in the app. If you shoot in the cropped square, or especially the mini formats, you're gonna lose a lot of the benefit of that wide lens. As for the actual images, I'd also recommend not looking too closely at the original files, or you're going to notice digital artifacts that are reminiscent of vintage digicams or even webcams. So much so, I wouldn't even bother recording onto SD cards. Instead, use the PAL as it's designed to be used. Shoot casually and smile as the often unexpected results pop up moments later on your phone. Here, the quality is more than good enough for digital sharing or physical output using one of Fujifilm's Instax printers. At this point, it would be easy to only recommend the PAL for kids or teens and that serious photographers should stay clear, but I actually enjoyed my time with it and the way it encouraged me to take photos in a completely different way to normal. It's certainly fun, it's certainly cute, but only you can decide if it's worth the asking price. I'd have been happier had it been a little bit cheaper, but I guess it's not subsidized by the necessity of Instax Media for day-to-day -day use. 
You could print everything if you like, or nothing at all. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments, especially if you're an existing Instax owner or someone who's considering an instant camera for yourself or maybe as a gift. And remember, if you'd prefer a standalone Instax camera or an Instax printer for your phone, do check out my other videos on this channel as I've reviewed them all. Which only leaves me to thank you for watching, kindly request a like and a follow, and bid you farewell until next time. Bye-bye.